Hello viewers, welcome to another electrifying video on electrology. Today we will discuss about the Ferranti effect. As we all know, electricity is produced at power plants using large generators and transmitted over long distances to end users. Safety devices and components are essential for the efficient and safe operation of power transmission lines. One significant phenomenon affecting transmission lines is the Ferranti effect where under light or no load conditions, the receiving voltage exceeds the sending voltage, contrary to the typical voltage drop assumption due to line losses. This effect has implications for system efficiency and safety. This video will explain the causes, benefits, drawbacks, etc. of the Ferranti effect. For a clearer grasp of the Ferranti effect, be sure to watch all the way to the end. This intriguing phenomenon, where the voltage at the receiving end of a long transmission line exceeds the sending voltage under light or no load conditions, has been baffling scientists and engineers since its discovery in 1887. British electrical engineer Sebastian Ziani de Ferranti first noticed this peculiar occurrence when he observed voltage increases at various points in the London power system. This was particularly evident in medium to long transmission cables when the receiving voltage exceeded the sending voltage. Interestingly, this phenomenon doesn't occur in short transmission lines, adding another layer of mystery to the Ferranti effect. But what causes the Ferranti effect? The primary contributor is the transmission line capacitance, which is the ability of the transmission line to store an electric charge. This capacitance is greatly influenced by the proximity of the conductors, particularly in underground cables. The cable consists of numerous shunt capacitors and series inductors distributed evenly along its length. The capacitors generate reactive power that flows back toward the source, while the inductors consume this power, causing a voltage drop in phase with the sending voltage. As a result, the voltages combine, leading to an increase in the receiving voltage. The Ferranti effect is also impacted by the load connected at the receiving end of the transmission line. Under no load conditions, only the charging current, drawn by shunt capacitors, flows through the transmission line. This current generates reactive power, inducing a voltage drop across the inductor that is in phase with the sending voltage, thereby increasing the voltage at the receiving end. When there is a light load, the charging current primarily capacitive, surpasses the load current due to line capacitance. This leading charging current generates more reactive power than the load consumes. The resulting voltage drop across the inductors is nearly in phase with the source voltage, proportional to the charging current, leading to the Ferranti effect as the charging current surpasses the load current. However, under full load conditions, the load current surpasses the charging current from the capacitors. With a substantial load current flowing through series inductors, the reactive power consumed exceeds that generated by capacitors, resulting in a negative net reactive power and a voltage decrease at the receiving end. The supply frequency also plays a crucial role. The Ferranti effect arises from reactive power generated in the shunt capacitance of power lines, which requires frequency in voltage and current. Thus, DC transmission lacks frequency and doesn't exhibit the Ferranti effect. Transmission lines operating at high frequencies are more susceptible to this phenomenon. So, there you have it, electrifiers. The Ferranti effect, a captivating quirk of power transmission lines that keeps us on our toes. Stay tuned for more electrifying content on electrology. Don't forget to like, subscribe and zap that notification bell to stay charged up with the latest in electrical engineering. Thanks for watching Electrology. Stay curious, stay electrified.